Welcome to this video. My name is Rajveer, founder of Code and Compile, and in this video, we're going to talk about how we can interface Control X Core with IOLink device via Ethercat. If you've seen my last video, I was talking about the interface of Control X Core with many PLCs like Siemens and Aaron Bradley and different PLCs using different protocols like S7 Communication, OPC UA, or you have also seen how I can interface Control X Core to the cloud via MQTT or Mongo database. But in this video, I'm covering a special protocol, which is also a biggest tool in Industry 4.0, which is IOLink. IOLink has been used quite a lot in many industries to make the sensor, the whole sensor system more smarter, because you can change the parameter of a sensor while it is operational. So in this example today, we're going to see how we can access this IOLink sensors in Control X Core via IOLink Master and how we can change the parameter while the sensor is operational. So it's going to be very interesting if you're using IOLink device and if you have Control X Core. So let's see what do we have in this video. We will start with Control X Core interfacing IOLink Master. So we're going to use IOLink Master from IFN. The model which I'm using is 1332. And we're going to use the protocol EtherCAT to communicate between these two devices. Okay, so let's see first the connections. So how the connections are being done. This connection has been already done on my trainer. As you can see, I have Control X Core, which is connected with the terminal XF10 to my computer via Ethernet. And XF50 is going to IOLink Master. And in this IOLink master, I have given power supply of 24 volts. And this IOLink master is also connected to my network. Plus, we are using two ports, X01 and X02. X01 is used for optical distance sensor, just as such, just for an exercise. And X02 is connected to my signal lab. And you can see these two devices on my trainer on the photo. So let's begin with the several steps to interface these two devices. Step number one, we have to add IOLink master in our EtherCAT network. So how to add this IOLink master? We will be using Control X IO as a software. In this case, you have to make sure you have ESI device description file already installed in your software. If you don't have, you can download that from this website. So I have hyperlinked this. So if I click on that, I will go to a website of IFM where you will find several files given to support your projects. For example, here, if you see startup package, either cat, you have Bosch Rexrod Control X. And here you can download this file. Make sure you have an account and you just need an ESI file. So to download this and you can install that in your software. So I'm going to show you quickly how you can do that. So we will open Control X works and here I will open Control X IO engineering. And in this app, I'm going to set up my EtherCAT interface to make sure Control X Core and IFM IOLink Masters are communicating successfully. So the software will start in a while. And this is the fourth most step. And if you notice in my Control X Core, here in my homepage, I have EtherCAT not configured. So you have to configure that on the web interface. Just simple step. Open this one. And here, just add your EtherCAT master, port XF50. Now this is added. So here it says topology not okay. That's fine. We're going to configure that. So make sure you have your EtherCAT master app installed in your Control X Core. And this step has been configured. And after that, you can just open Control X IO. It's here. And here I'm going to file and I will create a new project. And here I will see Control X Core IO project and click. Let's name it as test true and click OK. So it will open a project and very quickly I will see here my Control X Core. And here one more important part is you have to make sure your IP address is correct, which you can do that from here, communication settings. And I know my IP address from my browser is 076. So I have to make sure this is working fine. And alternatively, I can also click here and you can see your Control X Core. Then you can make a test. It will make a test and everything looks OK. Click OK. Now we are in EtherCAT Master. So right click on this device here and do scan for devices. But before that, you have to make sure you have installed ESI file and you have connected your IONIC Master in the correct networks. Click on that and it will scan for the devices. And you will see here I'm using Control X Core Plus, which has an integrated power feeder, ULUP. 
and it has integrated digital inputs and digital outputs. Plus, I have my IFM Ireland Master located here. So this step is correct. If your ESI file is not installed properly or if it's missing, you will see here a tiny error or a warning. Okay, so you have to make sure you install this ES ESI description files and then move this network into your project and click apply and you click after you apply, click OK. And now you have all the files listed here. So this was the step one. We have to configure our IOLink master in our Control X IO. And if you notice here, you have IOLink master 1332. This is the model number of the IOLink master I'm using. And it has eight channels. And by default, it has given four byte input, four byte output to each channel. But this we will reconfigure later on. So once this step is done, you can just transfer this configuration. So you download that and this is going to tell you that it will switch to initialization and bring to OP. Click yes. And this has been downloaded completely with a message here. And here, if you see it's operating and now it's running. So if I open this one now, you will see all my devices here in operational state without any error. So this step has been successfully completed. Let's go back to the presentation. So step one was scan and add IonLink master, which was very easy. In a few minutes, we have that. Step number two, let's see what is the second step. You have to assign the memory for IonLink ports. Now I'm using two IonLink devices. One is my distance sensor. And if you notice their distance sensor is 05D150, and this has a process data input this information you will find in the manual of your sensor. If you have a sensor, if you're using this sensor or any other, go to the manual and check what is the process data input memory required. It needs 16 bit in this case. So this information you will find in the memory. And if you notice there, I'm having the first bit as my sensor output, which is switch state on and off. And my information about the distance is in this memory area. So I have two bytes and 16 bit total uh, memory area. So for this case, I go back to my control X IO. I have to make sure this is minimum how much I need. I need two byte. So let's see what I can do here. I open this one, double click on this one, or maybe click on update device. And once you click on that, there should be a window. Or maybe go for a plug device. Where is that? Uh, there should be a window coming. Up, oh, it was on my different <laughs> screen. So this is the window, and here you can define what is the memory you need in your first port X01. So here you can see that I need two bytes. So minimum is input four byte. I don't need any output because sensor is my input device. So I can just use input 04 byte process data, select this one and double click. You can see that this will update here. So now this is updated. So this was the, this was the step here. We have to update our memory area for the sensor. Okay, let me bring back here. Second step, the next step was we have to do same for the for the signal lamp. Now this is my output device and here you can see that my process data output is 48 bit. Now why I need so much memory because this is a signal lamp which has the different segments and each segment can have a different colors and the segment can have a different behavior. It can blink, it can be static and then it has a buzzer as well. So you need a lot of memory to send the information to this device. So in this case I need 48 bit which is kind of like 6 byte. So second channel I can plug it in here I can see it's my output I don't have six so I can take eight byte so you need eight byte data here so double click this one and this will be updated here perfect and rest of the ports if you see in my control X in my IOLink device I'm not using these other ports so what I can do that, I can disable that. So in this case, you can also plug the device and you will see deactivate. So I'm not using it at all. So I can deactivate these ports. So very quickly, I will just deactivate my other IO-Link channel. So once it's deactivated, I can transfer that to my control X core. This is done and completed. And you can see that here, everything is fine again. All right, this was the initialization steps. All right, so this was step number three, assign the memory. 
and let's see the next step. Step four, deactivate the unused ports. We already did that, so this step is already covered. So until, until these steps, what we have done, we have just bring our IOLink master into the network and they both are talking. So they started sharing information. If you wanna check that, to make sure they are talking, I can show you in my settings and data layer and this should already be receiving information from Ivling Master. So here I can go to my field buses, Ethercat, Master, Instances, Ethercat Master, real-time data, input, input data, and now here you can see that I have Ivling Master mentioned here, and channel one, which was my distance sensor. And the information is coming in byte one. Now if you notice, I move my sensor so this is measuring the distance and this value should be changing. You can see that the value is here, most probably in byte one. And if I bring the sense down, the value changes. And you can see that the behavior of light is also changing because there is a sample code inside. Okay, if you want to see that information, you can also see that in the ControlX PLC engineering app. So this is what we're gonna do next. So the next step is we have an example let me just bring you full screen. We have to read the process data from the distance sensor and actuate the signal lamp. So we will do an exercise in which we are going to read the information from here, make a code in the PLC app and actuate the signal lamp. Okay, so let's do more precise. In this example, we have several steps. So how to do that? The first step is we have to open the PLC app. So we already have PLC app in my control X score. What I can just quickly do is I can open my PLC engineering app. And in this app, we are going to write a code. Okay, so, but we will follow these several steps which are mentioned here. So maybe I will present that in a presented view. So the step one was add a new project in control X core. So we add a new project so here you can see file, new project, and here I will select control X core ARM64. That's my controller, okay? You have to make sure you choose the correct controller. And I can see here test 1.1 is my name of the project. And click OK. So the first project is gonna be loaded and we do the same, same step as in control IO. We have to make sure it's communicating with my hardware. So we can see there in the meanwhile, the first step was add a project and verify the communication settings. So we have to verify the communication settings. So to do that, right click your device, go to communication settings and make sure you give the correct IP address and make a test. It's working fine, click OK. So this step has been done. The next step is add IOLink device in the data layer real time, edit online from control X score. So in this step, we have to add the data from IOLink master in our PLC project. In this step, you should always do once you have done the control X IO configuration. So in this case, I can right click, edit online from control X core. This is the important step. And here we can select the control my control is my ethergate master instance. And once you do that, do that, you will see your devices here. Now here you can see I have, I can access my, my bus feed, but I don't need that. I can access my inputs, digital, digital inputs and digital outputs. I also don't need that. I just need my IF, IFM iLink like master. In this case, I just need channel one and channel two. So I can take these two channels and I can just so uh, click this button here, and this will move the data from here to my data layer real time. That's it. This step will allows you to access this data now in your project. All right, now the data is here. If I click on my channel one, you can see that here my data is defined with my address input byte zero, byte one, byte two, and byte three. And here in this case of output, I have QB zero because this is my output device. So I, my data is coming here. Now, what is the next step? The next step is select the source, which you did that, add a global library, define the variables and write the code. So I have been writing this code before I shot this video. So I will just copy paste this word, uh, the code here, but I will also explain you what I'm doing here. 
So first step is we have to add an object, which is global variable list, which is GVL. And I will add it here. Now I will copy my variables, which I already defined. So very quickly, I will just copy my code from my different window. Copy and paste here. So here you can see that I have my distance sensor and IB0 and IB1 because I need just two bytes. I check raw byte zero as my variable and raw byte one. This is my global variable. Similarly, my segments QB1 is my segment five, QB2 is segment four, three, segment three, four, segment two, five, segment one. These are my output address. Okay, now I go to my PLC program and I have to write a simple program to read the data of my set point and write the data to my, read the data from my distance sensor and write the data to my signal lamp. So in this case, I will copy my variables to save some time. So here you can see I take a variable w data as a word, distance variable as integer, b output as boolean, and by segment one as byte. Okay. And then I will just take the code very quickly, copy and paste. Okay, so in this code, what is happening? We are taking this W data as a word which was declared here, and we concat the byte. We combine two bytes because the information is coming in individual byte here. IB0 and IB1. I'm going to combine that. So I combine that in my word w data and once i combine that i have to do a right shift because because if you notice the data which was in my sensor was coming in these bits you see so we have to move towards the right so i'm shifting towards the right by four this is what i'm doing here this is a right shift by four bit this is the command for that and then I define the limits because I know in my sensor my range is 5 to 200 centimeters. So if the range is more than 200, I move 200 in that. So this is just the limits, extreme limits. And now we have a, a byte, a bit output. In this, I am using just the last bit, but this I'm using for the raw byte. So if you notice that here again, this is my output of the sensor. So sensor has a set point, and when the set point is reached, sensor gives an output. This I'm going to read into my Boolean address B output. Then in this case, I sent two to my segments. I sent two to all the segments. And two, I mean in my IOLink device signal lamp, by sending two, it is uh, moving, it will change the color to green. And if the sensor output is false, it will change the color to four. That's it, color to four means it's a red color. So simple, very simple logic, if and else, defining the limits and doing some right shift okay let's download this logic into the controller and let's see the operation it's gonna compile and in a couple of seconds it's gonna download the logic so now the logic seems to be downloaded and the plc is in stop mode let's go to run mode and now you can see that my distance is 15 centimeter so i can pick up my sensor and I can see my distance is 32 or 33 centimeter. And this you can also read, if you can see my camera, you can also read this distance on the top of the sensor device. So it's now 53 or 40, 39, 40, and this you also see in my PLC program. So based on the set points, we don't know the set point yet. Set point is already inside the sensor, but you can see that when the output bit is true here, now you can see that it's true, my lamp is green. And when my output bit is false, over here, my bit is false and the lamp is red. So I'm reading the information from my sensor. This information goes to Control X IO. From old Control X IO, I'm accessing the information in this my PLC program. And this PLC program is calculating the raw information and displaying the value in centimeter. And then I trigger the IO link output using a simple if else statement. Next example, very interesting. We want to read the product ID and the vendor ID of my IOLink devices 
using AOE, which is Automation Device Description over Ethernet protocol. So what we're going to do is we're going to read the information of our sensor. If the sensor, what is the ID of the sensor or what is the ID of the vendor? And this information, if you notice, is already given in the manual. For example, this sensor 05D150 has some index and sub index. These index and sub index you can also access using Control X Core. And for that, you need a library which is EtherCAT Master. So, this library is important to install into your PLC app. And using this library, you can access the index and sub index as well, which means this will also help you to later on change the set point of your sensor. How we can do that, we'll see that very quickly. But this example, I'm going to open the example, which I already did that so that it will make it easy for you. So just let me just open the example and we will explain you how this has been done. So I will save this example, open the project and I will open test tool. And let's see this example. And like I mentioned here, you need a library, CX EtherCAD master. And this library you can install from the library manager. So if I show you, this library manager is here. So if you double click on this library manager, you will see that this library is already here. And if you don't have this library, your code will show some error. And to install this library, all you have to do is click on this add library button here and it will open up a window like this and then you can check application, control X automation, communication and here. Just click on that and click OK and then this library will be installed into your program. And once this library is here, you can open the PLC program and here you can notice I have defined a program so I will explain you really quick it's not so difficult so basically i have these four variables which i also have in my first program this you already know then i just take a variable as a string and it's named as ethercat master just name of the instance and this is very important you need to define the ethercat address of your iolink master here you can notice i have mentioned 1005 how do you get this information you can go to your control x core go to your ethercat master and here you can find your information of the address 1005. So this address is important. This address you will also find into your control X IO. And if you double click your IFM IOLink master, you will find the address here. So this address you need and you should put it here based on which device you have. Maybe it's a different device, but you're doing EtherCAT. So make sure you put the correct address. And then you have a target net ID. Here the next ID is defined in different bytes and if you see this information is also coming from Control X IO. And this information must be in AOE and that's the net ID. So you have to make sure this is the ID you are mentioning here 172, 31, 254, Okay, this is important. Now comes the variable declaration for IO link read. So I read the vendor ID. So I take an empty string 32. Here is what my result is going to come. Then I have a command, IE cat AOE read. This is a function I'm going to read. And then you have, so this is just a variable for that. Then you have IOLink port number. So my port number is defined as two in this case. So you have the port number one, two, three, four, based on which port you have your device connected. So here port number is two. IOLink vendor is 16 and zero. So here is two at the moment, but if you see in our example, we want to read for IOLink device X01. So which is my port number one. So I will change that to one. And now we will see its vendor ID is index 16 and product ID index is 19. So I have to read 16 and 19. So 16 is my vendor. So my index number is 16 and there is sub index, which is zero. Okay, I have 16 and 0 and this information you can also find in your manual. So I've just took the chart from the manual. Okay, 16 and 0 will give me the vendor. And then I have some declaration if I have error in the communication, if it's done and the read command. So three Boolean variables. Now comes the product ID variable declaration for IOLink read. So we were reading right now the vendor. Now comes the product ID. 
So in case here, again, I have my port number, I will define it one. And similarly here, it's just the empty string, again, the function to read. So first port address 19 and zero. This is my product ID index and sub index. And if you notice that 19 is my product ID and zero is the sub index. So I'm also reading as a string. So these two are defined here. And again, three variables for error done and read product ID. This is done here. So this was the Boolean, uh, the variable declaration and comes on the bottom is the code for read function. So I have mentioned several comments here. So if you want, you can download this code. I will provide the link in the description of the video. You can also download and read the comments. So very quickly, I have a function here, read vendor. Execution command is my Boolean. Master name is my, this is an instance name, which we define on the top. Ethercad master. Slave address is the address I defined here, 1005. Ethercad address, target net ID is the net ID, is referred from controlx.io. This is also defined here. And then you have target port, and this is the IO link port, which we defined over here. And the index group. The information about this index group and index offset, you will find in the manual as well, in the Ethercad manual. So I will not go in detail about that. So I just, you can just copy paste the same, but make sure you refer to the manual of your IOLink vendor device. And then the size of the value, it will calculate automatically the byte requirement and the value address, the address this we already gave here, the value which we're gonna read, okay? So now there's some if and else statement. If the done is true, then error is false. Done is true. If there is an error, then error is true. Done is false. And finally comes now reading the product ID. So here, this was for the vendor ID, which I defined you. The similarly we have for the product ID, everything is same. It's just the product ID port number, okay? And rest of the code, it's the same, which we are reading from the sensor, which we did in the last example. So let's execute this code and see what will happen. In this case, I have two Boolean, uh, Boolean bits. So using this Boolean bit, I can read the information about my vendor ID and product ID. So right now, PLC in stop mode. Let's start the PLC. The PLC is in now run mode. So in this case, I have two Boolean bits which I need to trigger, which are here. So here is my read vendor. So I will double click this one. It's true. Now I have to press Control F7. Now it's true. Now it's true. You can see that my vendor ID is here. IFM electronic. This is the value you will see here. GMBH. IFM electronic GMBH. That's the value coming when I trigger this true. And if you notice here, the product ID. This will come when I trigger. So let me just trigger it back to false. This has been done. Now I go down and I'm gonna read the product ID, F7. Now it's true, you can see that it's reading 05D150. That's the product ID of my sensor. So this sensor ID is being read from the index 19. So this is done using AOE in this example. So the idea of showing this example is you can read the index and sub-index of your island devices using a bit of coding, okay? Now the next example in which we have to read the set point of the distance sensor using the same protocol. And this is just to show you how you can read the set point, which is at index 60 and sub index one. So in this case, I'm gonna open the program. So this will be file, open project, and my test project three. So here I'm going to add another sub index and index and I'm going to read the set point which is defined in the sensor. So this is being done while the sensor is operational. That's the benefit of IO link devices. And here once again, I can show you the code is exactly the same. I have just added extra variables. So this we have already seen. This is for variable declaration for our link read. This is just for vendor ID. This is the product ID. And here is the new part of the pro new part of the code. I have set point read. Now it's unsigned integer. Okay, this is not a string anymore. Now I have a variable set point read swap. Now sometime when you're reading from several devices, there is a requirement to swap the byte. 
This is also a requirement in this code. So I have to swap the information coming from IO link device to get the real correct information. So that's why I have to swap it. And then I have a Boolean operation to read the set point. Now here you can notice the important part is the port number, which is one, because my IO link device is connected to the first port. And then you have 60 as my index, one as my sub index. This is already defined in the manual, 60 as my index, one is my sum index, it will read my search point one or kind of set point one. Okay, and then just the error and done bit. So I'm going to download this code into my PLC and I'm going to show you very quickly how you can read the set point. So far, I was not sure how what is the set point inside in my sensor, but now I will know. Okay, so if you notice here, we have Let's go down. Read product ID, we already know that. Here's a set point. So I have to make the set point information true. Let's do that. And now you will notice the set point in the sensor is 89. This is the set point. So after 89, the output is changing. So if you notice that again here, my output is 37 so when the distance is below or equal to 89 output is true if the distance is more than 89 then output is false so you can notice now if you see the distance this you can read an i distance here here's the i distance and here's the variable so right now it's 44 so if i go beyond 89 which is 191 this is false all right so that's how you can read the set point. All right, this was about this example. I have done nothing fancy. I just took one more sub index and using the same read function, I could do that. Another example, interesting, sometimes you also have to change the set point. So you can also do the write operation. And this is also possible using AOE protocol. So in this case, I'm going to write it. So let me just show you another example. This is my example four. So sometimes it's also necessary to change the set point while the sensor is operational. So you can do that into your PLC. So let's just quickly load this example in my PLC. And to understand this code more, you can copy the code. I will give you the link in the description of the video. And then if you have any questions, you can type me a comment and then I will get back to you. All right. So here I have my information now let's go to play all right now set point which i have to change if you notice here i have a read function read product id set point here byte swap this is the write function so the set point which is i'm going to write is 25 at the moment you can see that is 25 so this 25 will be written in the sensor so let's do that. I have my right set point boolean bit here. So I can double click, press control F7. Now it's true. Now the set point should be 25. Let me just make it false. If I now read the set point here, I'm going to read it again. It should show you 25, which should come here. This is the reading 25. All right, let's verify that. So my set point before was 89. Now if you see here my sensor value, it's 30, 40 or 37. It's my output is false. Okay, because output is true when the value is below 25 or equal to 25. So I move my sensor a little bit closer and now it's 24 and you can see that my signal lamp is green as per my logic. As I move beyond, this will make it false. So my sensor set point has been changed using my PLC code. Very interesting, isn't it? Now comes the last interesting part, which I always do in my, all my videos, to interface everything with a dashboard on the Node-RAD. So I have created this Node-RAD already for you here, so I can just show you how this whole thing is working. I go to my dashboard, continue, and Hopefully it should be working. Let's me refresh that again. I think maybe I have to sign it again. Okay, it's working. So here you can see that I have my set point defined as 25. 
and distance value is 15. So now if I move my sensor, the value should be coming here. Now you can see that it's 18 and now it's reading 35. Okay, so now if the set point is 25, value is 29, my output is false, you can also see in my camera. I mean, let me just resize that so that we have a better view. Let me resize the window. Now it looks great. Okay, now I can read first the port number. I have to define if x01. I can read the vendor ID and product ID update. So it's reading IFM electronic and this is the, my sensor connected at port X01. How easy it is. Then if you change the port X02 and update, then it will tell you the device TV2510 is connected. Okay, so you can update the information just from the dashboard using some, some simple flows. And here you can see that set point is 25. I can change the set point now to let's say 102. Now set point is changed to 102 and output is true because it's reading 30 centimeters. So it makes it very easy just using several flows to change the set point of your sensor and read the data of your sensor via EtherCAD. So very easy, you can configure your IO-Link devices while it's operational and you can see a very nice example here. So to understand how these flows are working, I can show you my Node-RED flows real quick. Flow editor. So what I'm doing in the flow, I'm basically reading the information from my data layer. And if you notice here, I have a link. I have my vendor ID, product ID. It's coming in my data layer. And how this is coming to data layer? Because in my PLC app, I have I have a sig I have a symbol configuration. And in the symbol configuration, I'm reading the global variable and PLC program variables. So all these variables I'm reading. And once you add your variables in your symbol configuration, this variable is also coming into your data layer. So if you go to your settings and go to the data layer, and here you can notice, you can go to your PLC, PLC app, application, system, this is your global variables coming here and that's your PLC program variables. So I'm just reading the variables and writing the variables in my in my flows. So here I'm reading vendor ID, product ID. This is the drop down to select the port number. And then I'm updating the data. So I'm basically I'm triggering the bits in my PLC program for a fraction of seconds and just subscribing to the data from your PLC app. Very simple, and if you want to, if you also want to have a copy of this code, you can do that. Go to the video description; you will find a link there. Okay, so this was about how you can interface IO Link devices with Control X Core via EtherCAD. I hope this was an interesting lesson for you. And if you've seen my last video, I have been showing you, starting from scratch, how to use PLC app, how to use Control X IO, how you to interface. Python IDE with Control X Core, how to interface different PLCs using Boss Device Bridge app, and now about Ionic device. So I hope you have seen all my other videos. If you haven't, you can definitely watch them all. It's like a one hour or 40 minutes videos each, but I'm sure you will learn a lot about that. And in my next video, I'm gonna talk about how you can interface Control X Core with an HMI. So I'm gonna use Smart HMI. So, so far I was using all my dashboards on Node-RED, but I can also show you how you can read, make a more dashboards on a smart HMI. And why it's called smart, you will see that in the next video. So I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you like my video, please subscribe, comment and share and wait for the next video about smart HMI with Control Score. Thank you, have a nice day and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.